Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you that Jesus is alive in us in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we thank you for the power in that name, Jesus. Amen and amen. You can be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to stand before you long. I know y'all probably saying that. That's prophets talking. But truly, I'm just standing in the world. We're going to stay in one book. Hallelujah. And we're going to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my NLT, it said the Acts of the Apostle. But hallelujah, we've already unseen the manifestation, demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But we're going to go to the Logos word. And perhaps if you just be attentive and get your spirit calm so you can be able to hear, then you can get a rhema word. Hallelujah. See, when you come into the presence of God, regardless of what the word, the Logos word is going forth, then God will lift up off the pages and speak directly to your situation. I'm just going to, y'all mind if I just teach a little bit as I go along? So I try to make it, I'm, I, I try to tell people I'm not those one of those profound prophets. You know, try to make it all hard for you. It's just, it's, it's just easy peasy. Amen. It's just obedience. Hallelujah. I think if we would have obedience and discipline, it would take us a long way. Amen. Obedience and discipline. So in the book of Acts, I'm going to read from the King James, and then I'm going to switch over to the um, NLT. And we're going to read on here. And this comes in after Peter and John you would think did a miraculous thing. Amen. So as we go along, start at verse 1. And as they spoke unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus, say Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them, and these hands were no good hands, amen. <laughs> and they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now evening tide. How about many of them which heard the word believe, say believe, and that the number of men was about 5,000. Wouldn't that be something? Just because you believe that 5,000 believe. I lay hold of that in the name of Jesus. And then it says, and it came to pass on tomorrow that the rulers and the elders and the scribes, how about you get the government, everybody stirred up because of the name of Jesus, amen? And the religious folks, you see the scribes in there? And Ananias, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and they just put there some of my friends, some of my associates, some of my family members. Amen. As many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together in Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power? Say power. power. Or by what name? Say name. name. Has ye done this? I'm glad they asked. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Said unto them, ye rulers of the people and the elders of Israel, if we this day be examined by the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Say, I'm whole. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him do of this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at the knot of the builders and became the head of the corner. Now there is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven. Give it among men whereby we must be saved. Let me just take a moment there. There's no other name. See, we will understand this. Um, we can't use the name Jesus just so loosely. Amen. It because it says no other name. I want you to get that. There's no other name. Here it is, the Sadducees, the, everybody in the government and all that. Um, that's the reason why when Christmas come around, they want to tell you don't say, they don't want to hear that Christ in there. Amen. They want to they take all that out and just say, you know, have a happy holiday. 
Amen. So, but there is, so look at your name and say, there's no other name which you can become saved except by the name of Jesus Christ. He that comes from Nazareth. No other name. So I, I want you to get this. Some of you, in, you know, in your workplace where um, they don't want you to say the name Jesus. You know, some places that you go when they, you know, in the schools, they don't want you to talk to the children about Jesus. See, it's, if they was doing that 2,000 years ago, it ain't changed. They still doing it today. Amen. But perhaps when you finish reading the story, you'll get your little Wheaties. Amen. And verse 13 says, and now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived, I like this, Bishop, that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. It doesn't matter where you have a GED. It doesn't matter where you don't have a GED. It doesn't matter if you can't read, hallelujah. They say these men were unlearned and looked like they was untaught. However, they have been with Jesus. Hallelujah. I see, that's some shouting right there. I don't care about my all my titles. I don't care about people don't need to know about my, my degrees. One thing they do see, they know that this woman has been with Jesus. Hallelujah. That's all men and women need to know. Hallelujah. Glory. They don't need to know that you've been with your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Hallelujah. I love Bishop. But it's more important to me, hallelujah, that men and women, when they look at me, they know that I belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because, see, when, they, when people know that you belong to Jesus and you've been with Jesus, then they will treat you differently. Ah, I'm preaching real good. I'm preaching real good. I'm preaching real good. See, when you don't look like from which you belong, then you'll get mistreated all, in all kind of ways. Hallelujah. Listen, I have never had, it, had a man to even look at me wrong. I remember when I first, my gift and start coming in. And I would go out, I would walk along the side. And I remember praying. I said this to someone that if individuals look at me, they couldn't, no lust spirits or anything. I never had to be concerned about that. I mean, to the point that even men, is a, it has to be genuine for them even to give me a compliment because I prayed that long time ago. They got to really be men of God to step out there and give me a compliment because I can't stand lust spirits. I can't stand spirit. I, 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 I'm not that thirsty that I need another, I need a man to have to tell me you look good. When I look in the mirror, I already know I look good. And that don't mean, um, uh, that don't mean if I got hair rollers in or what have you. I look good from the inside. Hallelujah. But they can't help but come out on the outside. Hallelujah. I know some people, they may look good in the physical, but they sure don't look good from the inside. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, you look like God. Find you another neighbor and say, you look like God. Ah, ah. So, and, 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 and so they say, that you done been with Jesus. So when you go into work, see, when you come in to the house of God on a Sunday, when you go into work on Monday, they should be able to look at you and tell that there's something different. And they say, girl, what? you're so looking good. You stay. I want you to holler back at them and say, because I done been with Jesus. <laughs> when you go to the grocery store or whatever, and they looking at you, you know, don't get all bent out of shape. You, you got to forget that you're carrying the glory. Sometimes people staring at you. They can't help it. I remember I was at the, we was, go, we was going on a cruise. And this lady just kept eyeballing me and eyeballing me. I'm like, what is going on? And finally, when I got to the counter, what did I have on? I had something on or what have you. And she told Kiara, no, this is what we're going on the cruise. She told Kiara, she is so beautiful. It, but what she was saying was the glory. Amen. It, what she was saying was the glory. I don't. You don't have to be on the front of a magazine 
to know that you're beautiful. Hallelujah. I'm a good looking chocolate sister. But I'm just not the milk chocolate that everybody else can handle. You see the difference? Hallelujah. I'm talking to my ladies. Y'all would have got that. Y'all should have caught that in the spirit. Hallelujah. They got vanilla chocolate. I'm not going to leave out the red bones. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not going to leave out the red bones. I don't know if it's good than milk chocolate. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Woo. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. <laughs> do this a test it. Do this a test it. See which one is, is brought the most. Amen. I'm meddling now. I'm meddling. I'm just meddling. I'm just meddling. <laughs> I promise y'all, I just got that right now. Amen. So then verse 10 says, and behold, the men which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. <sighs> he was standing there. You see that? Even though he was standing there, they still was trying to get him some heat. The man, so let me give you the backdrop. He was impotent for 40 years. And they still, and they say, but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them is manifest to all, them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. There's going to be some miracles. Come here, daughter. Come, come here, come here. Even though people done seen the transformation in sister Amanda life. She's standing right next to me. You're going to steal. And this is what you're gonna, that's why I'm trying to build your spirit. They're going to still be some. That's why I'm, I can't let, just let you go. They're gonna, you're going to have to be able to stand up against those Sadducees, those Fadducees, the government, you know, family members, all that, ex cult people and all that. You, you're going to have to be able to have that boldness like Peter and John. Because although we see the miracle, there going to still be some of those that don't believe. But just because they don't believe, that don't mean you're supposed to stop your assignment. Yeah. Hallelujah. You, you got to know what God did for you. The man wasn't scared. He was still standing right there. He said, I, I know what Jesus done did for me through this man. And one, I'm not going to run ahead and get my miracle. I don't got my miracle. And then I'm going to... Let him stand out there by himself. So we're going to see, thank you, daughter. We're going to see just how Peter and John handled them. Verse 17, but that is spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Look at there. They was threatening them not to use the name of Jesus. Same thing today. They don't care if you use the word God, because when people use the word God, I'm like, what God? But it's the name Jesus that they don't want you to say. Hallelujah. And so that's just, just let's take, um, uh, let's just do the implied. If they don't want you to use that name, then there's, that's what the song is say. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. I know. I know. It's something about the name Jesus, but we know what the something is. The something is because it it's the power in that name. The something is because it's the blood in that name. The something is about that name because it's the word of the name. And it says, and they called them and commanded them 
not to speak at all nor teach. There go again in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered, say, I want you to get, when I say you're going to get your Wheaties, this is how you, got, you need to get your Wheaties. Right, right here at verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot speak the things which we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, as they came with a threat, you got to understand that, look, the Lord pulled us off the pages. After they threatened them, they let them go. <laughs> See, what you keep, you keep getting your panties in a twist. You keep rocking in fear because of the threats, baby. But what you got to realize is that the devil got to let you go. It has always been determined that he going to let you go. God is trying to get you to recognize the power of the name of Jesus, the power in the blood, so that the devil would let you go. I said, my God. They threatened them, daughter. The threats going to come. Don't get moved by the threats. Because you just to get excited and say, he getting ready to let me go. <laughs> He getting ready to let me go. Another threat that came. He getting ready to let me go. I'm getting slippery. All this blood of Jesus. I'm getting ready to slip out of the grip of the enemy. <laughs> All this anointing. I'm getting ready to slip out of the grip of the enemy. He getting ready to let me go. Hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory. I told you faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of the things not seen. But you just keep your hope anchored in the Lord. You keep your hope that I'm going to be delivered. You keep your hope that I'm going to be set free. You keep your hope I'm going to get set free. You keep your hope I'm going to be in my right mind. He's going to have to let me go. He got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go. I just seen this in the spirit realm. Poverty going to have to let you go. <laughs> Poverty going to have to let you go. Poverty going to have to let you go. We just had a, a word that just came forth. You're going to get blessed in the land. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, you just got to talk to the land. I got a word out of the book of Genesis 26 <laughs> that you're going to bless me. <laughs> My blessings are coming forth in the name of Jesus. My blessings coming out of 7227 East 134th Circle. My blessings coming from 1126 Northeast Delta School World. My blessings coming from every place the sole of my feet should tread upon. It shall bless me. Blessings going in and blessings coming out. Cut that up, oh, shut up. But the end of us shut it about. He got to let you go. I prophesy he has to let you go. Depression has to go. Fornication has to go. Pornography has to go. Sickness and disease has to go. Failure has to go. Low self-esteem has to go. Poverty has to go. Loneliness has to go. Mental illness has to go. Deliverance, it has to come. Addiction has to go. Marriage issues has to go. In the name of Jesus. 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 In that name. In that name. Hurry up, 
system. Nera Dolomo Shaba. Send more of your threats. Cause I'm getting ready to get let go. Send more of your threats. I'm getting ready to be released to the nations. Send more of your threats. I'm getting ready to take this promotion. Send more of your threats. I'm getting ready to get that all God has for me. So when they father threaten them, they let them go, finding nothing. How they might punish them. You torment spirits, you will not punish any longer in the name of Jesus. Because of the people. For all men glorified God for what they have done. They're going to have to give God the glory for what he's done in your life, Sarah. They got to give God the glory for what he's done in your life, Amanda. They got to give God the glory for what he's done in your life, Dustin. They got to give God the glory for what God has done for you. Yay! For the man was above 40 years old in whom this miracle of healing was shown. It don't matter whether you're 40, 50, 60, 70. It don't matter how long the devil been riding your back. He's going to have to let you go if you just keep walking with the Jesus. Keep calling on the name Jesus. Keep calling on the name Jesus. Keep calling on the name Jesus. Let's take a minute and call on that name. Hallelujah.
23 says that there was a report that went out to the believers. And I wanted to read that from the NLT, and we're going to seal this with communion. But before you take your seat, at the sound of three, we're going to call on the name Jesus three times. Everybody stand to your feet, stand to your feet. They see the instructions you obey. It's a miracle you shall receive. There's nobody on the side of my voice that don't need nothing from Jesus. I don't care if you're watching the web. I don't care how much money you got in your bank account. So as we count one, two, three, you're going to open up your mouth and you will Shabbat Jesus. Hallelujah. And I just got enough faith to believe that the three most important things that even you don't know that you need, God's going to let it manifest in your life. Find that I'm going to say that one more time, Bishop. That the three most important things, even if you don't know that you need them, God's going to allow them to manifest in your life. One, two, three. Jesus! 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 Jesus. Jesus. It said, as soon as they were free, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. And when they heard the report, all the believers lifted up their voice. I keep telling y'all it's not going to be quiet in heaven. Lifted up their voices together, just like we just did to pray to God. This is the prayer and then we're going to seal it when you come down and get your communion and we're going to let Bishop seal that in us. But this is the prayer that they prayed on one accord, one heart, one mind. I'm reading from the NLT. You come to agree with, with me. Anytime somebody's reading the word and it's a prayer, whether it's intercessory prayer or supplication prayer, read the word of prayer and you're not reading the same thing they're reading, your agreement is to say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, I agree with that. Amen. Amen. So, O oh, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in it, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through your ancestors, David, your servant, saying, why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? Hear me, Generation Z and Millenniums. The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers got together against the Lord and against his Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod, Antipas, and Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus. You wasting your time coming against people of Jesus. Your holy servant whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. You, that's what you got to understand. Everything. If it happened in your life, God allowed it. I'm going to say that again. I'm not going to try to explain it away. If, if my, one thing my spiritual mother always told me, if he allowed it, then it was his will. That's right. Because God used everything in our life. We always want the good, but we learn so much more from the mistakes of the bad. We learn so much more when we went through trials and tribulation. See, when you don't have no money, and you had to walk through those times and God bless you and you come out of that. You come out on the other side, learn how to handle money and reverence money. But then sometimes I say, that ain't my, my issue. Until you get sickness and disease in your body, then you begin to know him on a, another level. Everything, everything, I, I'm telling you what it says. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. Right. 
And now, oh Lord, hear their threats. There you go again. God heard them talking about you. <laughs> and this was it. And, and give your servant. See, I'm a servant of God. See, I'm making this prayer. Give your servant, prophet Adrian, great boldness. You know how many times I don't pray this prayer? I ain't just reading it to you right now. I've been praying this prayer for years. That's why you see boldness on my life. There's the answer. There's no secret. Yes. And hear the threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching of your word. Stretch out your hand with your healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Yeah. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled, say oh, all, filled. filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Hey, let me give you a little secret. If we your set pastors, you're going to have boldness. None of my children are timid. Even the prissy ones. Just poke them the wrong way. So we're going to seal this 